Hi, and welcome to a new video. The concept of what powers a watch can be a very confusing thing for people who are quite new to mechanical watches. And many people who discover their interest in watches and watchmaking start out confusing the two terms mechanical watch and automatic watch. Which is not a terrible mistake, but knowing about the distinction helps a lot with your basic understanding of mechanical watches and watchmaking in general going forward. So this video is mainly for people new to watches and watchmaking, and here is a simple explanation to get you started a little easier with your watches. The two most common types of wristwatches today are quartz watches and mechanical watches. The power source of a quartz watch is a small battery, the time-giving regulator or oscillator within that watch is a quartz crystal. It's those watches that need a battery change every two to three years or so. Quartz watches have been commercially available roughly since the 1970s. Those quartz watches are predated in terms of technology by traditional mechanical watches. The power source in mechanical watches is a coiled flat spring housed in the mainspring barrel, which gets wound and releases its stored energy into the gear train. The regulator or oscillator in a mechanical watch is a balance wheel with its hairspring. These watches can basically run indefinitely as long as they are kept wound, and those watches, much like cars, need a service for cleaning and oiling roughly every five to six or seven years or so to keep them in good working shape because they are basically tiny mechanical gearboxes. Most people who discover their love for mechanical watches start out with an inexpensive mechanical watch. And in mechanical watches, we typically can make out a distinction between hand-wound watches and automatic watches. That distinction only tells you how the watch gets its power into the mainspring. So the term automatic watch is really just a subcategory of mechanical watches, and it is basically an additional function to the watch instead of a standalone category. The basic functionality of a hand-wound mechanical watch and of an automatic watch are otherwise identical. If you want to know how a mechanical watch works in general, you can check out this video here. So what most people want to express is that they discovered mechanical watches for themselves. It just so happens that they started out also with an automatic watch, simply because they are so abundant today. To make matters even more confusing, the term automatic is widely used and often printed on the dial. So it seems to be the differentiating thing between a mechanical watch and a quartz watch, but as we know now, it just addresses an additional function within the mechanical watch. Other examples for that are the words Inkablock and Chronograph that are often displayed on the dial. Those also just hint to an additional feature of the watch. A chronograph, for example, also is just an additional stopwatch feature added to or integrated into the basic mechanism of a mechanical watch. And Inkablock hints to a specific shock protection system that is integrated into a mechanical watch. In the modern environment of relatively inexpensive mechanical watches, the term automatic, or automatic watch for that matter, have become almost synonymous with mechanical watches. And that's what's so confusing. I believe that widespread promotion and advertising by makers and watch shops made this term so popular because, especially during the 1990s and early 2000s, it helped to advertise the main feature of that mechanical watch, and that was that they would never run out of a battery, because they don't have one. So the term automatic simply advertises this, which seems to be sort of like a little perpetual mobile machine on your wrist, and helps to make mechanical watches interesting and somewhat understandable. And that strategy still works. People who have never asked themselves how a wristwatch in general works, quartz or mechanical or whatever, are presented with an easy to pick up catchword without the need to be an engineer and with the benefit of having a watch that never stops. I guess they find themselves intrigued by how this little thing works on their wrist, right? That's why you are here, I guess. So how does it work? We already know about the mainspring and the barrel as the power source for a mechanical watch. Automatic watches have an additional mechanism that derives energy from the movements of the wrist while being worn and transfers that energy to the mainspring barrel. 
often constructed as a module and added to the back of the movement, a rotor weight on a central axis swings around because of the wrist movements during the day and puts that often bidirectional movement of the rotor to a mechanism that either isolates one direction of movement to be used as winding power or the mechanism transforms a bidirectional input of energy into a continuous unidirectional stream of energy that is then transferred via an intermediate wheel to the mainspring in the barrel. That's how the watch continuously winds itself while it's being worn. Most automatic watches can also be wound manually by hand if needed. I'm sure I will make a more in-depth video about that in the future, and if I already have done so by the time you're watching this, check out the description of this video for the link. If you want to know how a basic mechanical watch movement works, you can also check out this video here. The video is in the description, and it's pinned as the top comment underneath this video. A basic mechanical watch without an automatic winding system is called a manual wind watch or a hand wound watch. And that watch needs to be hand wound, as the name suggests, usually every day or so to keep running. The average power reserve for inexpensive automatic watches is around 40 hours today. For hand wound mechanical watches, it's also roughly the same. Although that can be very different depending on the movement used. Vintage movements usually have a shorter power reserve due to older technology mainly in the mainsprings. Sometimes the wrist movement provided by the owner is not enough to sufficiently wind the watch and keep it running. People who work at a desk and have a very short commute, people who work from home or people who have to take off their watches for certain parts of the day can struggle with this issue. That's why it can happen that a watch has stopped the next morning or it does not keep running over the time of a weekend when taken off. Usually the naturally occurring movements over the course of a day are plenty to keep the watch running, that's what they are designed for after all. If you do run into trouble with the power reserve of your watch, this obviously can be a technical issue, but you should also check your wearing habits first. Another advantage of the automatic movement to the manual wind movement is that it can't be overwound. In traditional, purely handwound watches, the mainspring is fixed inside the barrel, and when the watch is fully wound, you should experience a noticeable resistance. If you try to wind beyond this point, you run the risk of breaking the spring inside the barrel, and the watch will either stop immediately or will have a drastically reduced power reserve. If that happens, that watch is definitely due for a repair. In an automatic watch, the same mainspring is equipped with a slipping end, almost like a clutch. That slipping mainspring allows the watch to be continuously wound by the automatic system without breaking or damaging the movement. Today, more and more sophisticated manual movements are also equipped with slipping mainsprings or some other kind of overwinding protection. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe if you don't want to miss out on new videos in the future. And you can also follow me on Instagram for more content. You find the link for Instagram in the video description. If you have any watchmaking related questions or if you have any ideas for future videos, feel free to comment them in the comment section down below. Thank you and I hope to see you in the next video again.